the new James Webb Deep Field Image and the Flamingo Study are shaking up our physics. It is becoming increasingly clear that on the large scales of the universe, nothing is really as predicted by our standard model of cosmology. This is the dawn of a completely new physics that we may soon have findings that will change our view of the world forever. James Webb is the best telescope of our time, and now this exceptional project, together with Flamingo, is about to strike a major blow against the dusty theories of astrophysics. Flamingo stands for Full Hydro Large-Scale Structure Simulations with all-sky mapping for the interpretation of next-generation observations. Deep field, and strictly speaking, it's the most extensive supercomputer simulation in the history of astronomy. In order to analyze the development of the universe from the Big Bang to the present day, global research teams have joined forces and established a network of the brightest minds and the most powerful computers in the world. Flamingo aims to provide us with a picture of the known universe that we have never seen before. The study looks at the evolution of the universe over billions of years and its current expansion and structure. Each computer and each simulation focuses on one area of the vast universe. Then the Flamingo researchers combine their results to create an ever-improving picture of the universe as it really is. And now comes the shock, similar to James Webb's deep field image, the first complete Flamingo deep field image could not confirm the existing laws of physics. What is the problem? Can you imagine that big names in physics like Stephen Hawking or the father of dark matter Yen Ort and many other astronomers based their theories on an illusion? It sounds crazy, but it's a fact that from around the 1930s, researchers based our cosmology on the existence of dark matter. However, it has not yet been proven that this dark matter really exists. In order to simulate the formation and evolution of galaxy clusters and virtual galaxies, we had to include at least one element of which we have virtually no idea whether it is real. Here's the catch. For a while, the calculation still worked, dark energy and dark matter were like physical stopgaps that served their purpose. But then the models reached their limits. The Hubble tension, which we will discuss later, was actually the first warning sign. Over time, more and more inconsistencies were added to the currently valid cosmology, and now James Webb and Flamingo are finally destroying the old dreams of scientists to have understood and decoded the universe. Somewhere, we have overlooked something crucial. A key feature of Flamingo's work is that this study not only works with models of dark matter but also gives space to the world of ordinary matter and new particles such as neutrinos. Ordinary matter makes up about 16% of all matter in the universe, and understanding it is crucial if we really want to understand cosmic evolution. New simulations have been and are currently being run on powerful supercomputers with varying scenarios and taking into account new factors such as galactic winds and the mass of neutrinos. In this way, scientists have been able to significantly improve the accuracy of predictions, but the real breakthrough to a universal understanding of cosmology has not yet been achieved. Despite this dedicated work, the generated simulations and countless virtual data are like an exciting puzzle, and every new real observation from James Webb or other telescopes around the world is valuable fodder for ever new simulations and the development of new data analysis techniques. The cosmological dilemma is perfect. Would you ever have believed that a telescope could drive scientists to the brink of madness? Never before have we heard so many astronomers and cosmologists say things like, we don't know anymore, we're at a loss, or nobody knows what's coming next. Some are in a spirit of optimism, and others are depressed. What they have believed in for decades is suddenly no longer true, and some scientists are having to start from scratch. These days, those who believed in the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago and a subsequent dark era of the universe are confronted with bright and very advanced galaxies that actually existed when the universe was just beginning to produce its first stars. James Webb discovered a number of galaxies that already shone like ancient galaxies in space just 300 or 400 million years after the Big Bang. This sheds a completely new light on the big question in physics, how much matter actually exists? How was it formed, and above all, when? Flamingo exacerbates the dilemma by depicting, in particular, the large-scale cosmological structures and showing here too that the real distribution of matter in the universe does not match the old calculations. Flamingo's fascinating images virtually show the distribution and evolution of all known galaxies and galaxy clusters in space. We now know that matter and galaxies move along a cosmic network. This network is one of the largest currently known structures in the universe and consists of filaments that are probably made up of a mixture of normal matter and hypothetical dark matter. The ideas of dark matter have so far served as an explanation for many effects of gravity and other forces acting between galaxies and even larger structures in the universe. Since James Webb and the discrepancies in the simulations have shown that the calculations do not work out in the upper structures, conventional matter and alternative theories have come back into focus. 
There are theories according to which slight variations of supposedly fixed cosmic constants can explain almost all visible effects of cosmology and galaxy movements, even without assuming the existence of dark matter. The Mond theory, for example, modifies Newton's laws of motion at very low accelerations as they occur in the outer regions of galaxies and can thus explain the observed rotation curves of galaxies even without the assumption of invisible matter. This, of course, raises questions as to whether all our calculations and ideas regarding the dominance of dark matter in the universe have been wrong so far. The Great Discrepancies in Cosmology, Hubble, and S8 The astronomer Hubble is considered one of the fathers of the Big Bang Theory. In the 1920s, he observed the movements of galaxies and came to the conclusion that distant galaxies were moving away from us. This gave birth to the idea of expansion, for which there was later further evidence, for example, in the cosmic background radiation. The universe was later measured on the basis of these values, and these values again played a decisive role in determining the age. But here too comes the catch because improved measurement methods and the constant progress of our technological possibilities made new measurements possible, and lo and behold, small but telltale discrepancies emerged, which are now known as the Hubble tension. Basically, it says that direct observations of nearby stars and galaxies show a faster expansion than the calculations based on the light of the Big Bang. Flamingo has now discovered a new discrepancy, this time within the so-called S8 parameter. This parameter deals with the distribution of matter in the universe and represents how clumped or clustered the matter is regionally in the universe. These observations must somehow be compatible with the cosmic background radiation. The radiation, called CMB for short, is considered a relic of the Big Bang and a kind of imprint of the structures that were present in the young universe. What we see today can be traced back directly to these first structures. It's a bit like blowing up a balloon with a dot on it, the bigger the balloon gets, the more the dot changes until it's possibly no longer recognizable as such. But if we let the air out, the stretched structures reunite to form a dot. The S8 values basically describe the expansion of the balloon or rather how the matter behaves on this expansion. Since the CMB is supposed to be something like the primordial matrix, the current measurements must be able to be calculated back to this matrix. However, this is not always possible, and this is where another problem begins. The CMB experiments suddenly yielded shifted higher S8 values, and it's therefore clear that we also have a discrepancy here, which further exacerbates the crisis. There is, of course, a connection between the S8 voltage and the Hubble voltage. Taking again our example of the balloon, the expansion rate S8 stresses which show discrepancies in the distribution of patterns on the balloon, and the Hubble stress occurs at the speed and regularity corresponding to the expansion of the balloon. Scientists are faced with a puzzle, and no one now knows what exactly this will mean for the future. These sources of error have already been found. Can you imagine how feverishly scientists are currently searching for the answers? The researchers who crack this cosmic puzzle are not only rewarded with recognition, awards, and new research funding, they are also driven by a curiosity that keeps them searching. New aspects are currently being included in the calculations in order to find a way out of the dilemma. Where were the errors? Which force or which type of matter have we not sufficiently taken into account so far, or are there possibly completely new factors in the universe that we can now discover? It's hard to imagine the complexity scientists have to deal with when trying to calculate the dynamics of the universe. We know how difficult it can sometimes be to predict the weather on Earth and to reconstruct the complex processes in the atmosphere. In the universe, these calculations and predictions span incredibly large dimensions, both temporally and spatially. And within this time and space, there are many components and lots of unknowns. In addition to the prime suspect, dark matter, many other values are currently under scrutiny, and others are suddenly receiving more attention because their role may have been underestimated in the past. Ordinary matter, for example, is not only subject to gravity but also to parameters such as the pressure of gases, the influence of galactic winds, supernova explosions, or the activities of enormous black holes. We do not yet know what role neutrinos and other extremely charged particles that are shot through space by these events play. Our universe is probably a complex interplay, similar to the ecological dynamics on our planet. Imagine if scientists wanted to describe the processes, interrelationships, and forces at work in a chaotic flower meadow or use computer simulations to depict the processes in this habitat. It would be possible to describe parts of it, but it would simply be impossible to describe the entire complexity in a few mathematical formulas.